I just sent Kyle our rankings. He's going to be fucking furious. <laughs> Tell him I hate him. <laughs> <laughs> it was the pause that did it for me. <laughs> Good thing we didn't stop recording. <laughs> on a mission of gravest consequence. For I am the Watcher, member of an ancient race far older than man. But though our power is great, we are pledged only to watch, never to interfere. But now mankind faces the greatest danger it has ever known, the danger of the Watchers of Earth. 199,999. Welcome to the Watchers of Earth 199,999, also known as Earth 616, apparently. I am your host, Andrew, and joining me, as always, is my co host, Seth. So not to get into our last episode's discussion on the multiverse, but doesn't 616, that's not the Marvel 616 universe. That is universe 616 in universe 199,999, right? We're going to get into that. Our third co-host, Joe, can be here today because he's beating himself outside of a... Ew, gross, Joe. He's beating himself up outside of a pizza (laughs) ball cart. And our fourth co-host, Uatu, couldn't be here today. Or is here. Because, and beating himself off. Our fourth co-host, Uatu, is here, but is sworn only to watch and never interfere. Anyways, today we watched Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness, which originally um, was released May 6, 2022, rated PG-13 for two hours and six minutes, written by Michael Waldron, directed by Sam Raimi. Andrew, did you know that in this movie, Doctor Stephen Strange casts a forbidden spell that opens the doorway to the multiverse, including alternate versions of himself, whose threat to humanity is too great for the combined forces of Strange, Wong, and Wanda Maximoff? That is not what happens. Well, then get on IMDb and (laughs) spread the truth. That's like the Shang-Chi movie saying he's the master of weapons-based martial arts. <laughs> you can write anything in there. I don't think they check it. It's like Wikipedia. So, Andrew, in a sentence or less, what did you think? So, hopefully, I have cooled down since the car ride. I really like this. I was surprised how much I just kind of, like, enjoyed this. Not to say that it is without faults, but I thought it was really fun. Kyle who I watched it with, did not like it, and he spent the entire car ride. You know, it's a really fun conversation. Um, When someone asks you a question, and then you answer it, and then they yell at you because they didn't like the answer, and they retort everything by just saying, no, no, uh uh-uh, no. And then I'm like, okay, well, then I just don't want to talk anymore. So that's fun. So I was a little heated. I've to be fair, I think then. everybody has been in that position. And With everyone Kyle? on yes. both sides. No, on both sides. <laughs> <laughs> he always says how, how I hate all these movies. And he's like, you're so negative. And I'm like, okay. And then every time I am not, he just yells at me. He was so pissed that I liked it. <laughs> anyway, what'd you think? I thought it was absolutely wild in a good way. I will say that... This was, I mean, much to our good friend Adam Driver's chagrin, this was the worst theater experience I ever had. I had to pee and had to run out at a certain point because I couldn't hold it anymore. It was too exciting. So for me to say that, hey, this was wild, and I I liked it. Again, I mean, everything has problems, but I liked it. But to say that on a Marvel movie, to say that on a Marvel movie I watched in a fart box where people were obnoxious... And for me to honestly come at it, for anyone just joining in on this episode, for me to sit here and be like, I liked it, instead of going, I think it was good, but I didn't like it. And like to just have a kind of straight answer like that is is very good for an MCU movie review on me. I'm glad you're uh, you're on my page then. So that means we both get to argue against Kyle's Ghost Racer. Get fucked can i tell you what happened in my theater so okay what happened in your theater hold on let me i'm just gonna are you gonna open up an email to adam driver yes hold on while i open google google mail google maps find adam driver's address hey Hey, google no i just want to put a hard cut here so that i don't have to remember to do it later so so the thing that people can do what they want and to be (laughs) fair this is opening weekends i can't you know i can't complain that much I can't handle people 
And it's probably me. It's probably me. Mine was surprisingly well behaved. I didn't have anybody like really shouting or clapping at anything. I did not have... Mine did not... You were the one. If you didn't hear anybody else doing it, it was you. It probably was. I cackled at the end. I knew it was not going to be good because at the very beginning, you know, when it has like the Marvel like studios thing, Mm -hmm. the guy next to me hummed it. (laughs) And I was like, I don't know if I can handle this. Also, that guy had some sort of respiratory thing because all of my lines in Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness had behind them (laughs) it was awful (laughs) I heard people drop their phones I heard people drop their keys I heard people spill a drink I heard kids go what's that door why is there a door there I heard people come back from the restroom and go what did I miss and then people went, well, oh, there's a door. And then, they, you know, they had to go through the door. And Patrick Stewart was at the door. And then they, he opened the door. And then Elizabeth Olsen was behind the door. I don't know how people go to the movie theaters. It's the worst. It's the absolute worst. And then during the scene, everyone gasped and went crazy. And I just was like, I get it. I know what you're doing. And you're allowed to do that. But I hate you. And it's, it's a pessimism thing on my end. And honestly, and we'll get into the movie proper, but... I like the movie. I think it was a little slow for me at the beginning, mainly. I find that funny. So the first big point of contention between me and Kyle, I think the movie was got to its point quick. I thought the movie like kind of moved pretty quick, just going. I was kind of surprised how quickly we were into it. But the thing I said to Kyle was, out of all these Marvel movies, he, he said it was a mess. And I was like, it felt like, out of all these Marvel movies, this felt focused. It was like kind of to the point and just kind of like moved. And Kyle's like, there was so much shit going on. And I was like, I don't really feel like it, there was. And he's like, we t- jumped through so many universes. I was like, Kyle, there were two outside of like the main universe. I know there's like a bunch. There's of the bunch that don't matter that are just there yeah. for visual. But there were two main universes. And he was like, well, to be fair, I fell, fell asleep. Was he the guy? And I was like, my, the guy with the <laughs> respiratory thing, I honestly thought somebody fell asleep. I was like, I'm going to have to listen to somebody snore. And then I realized that he just like had a... Kyle couldn't keep a track of what universe we were in and, and who anyone was. And I was like, I don't know what kind of movie you were watching. And he's like, well, I did fall asleep a bunch. And I was like, well, then that's not on the movie. Stop yelling at me. Well, and to be fair, like, it doesn't really matter <laughs> what universe they're in. and You know what I mean? Like, But like, I thought the movie was like surprisingly concise and like focused. There's really only one extraneous bit to me and i was honestly surprised i thought we were going to go the whole movie and then at the end would be the switcheroo where we learned that the scarlet witch was behind everything but it's her first scene it's like almost immediate like they show up ask her for help and then she she's like oops i slipped i'm the bad uh, guy i'm the villain and then we were just like i was like oh we're going for this and i kept thinking like when they were doing the like, dream walking and everything i was like is nightmare gonna show up is that what we're doing and it- is that how they're going to do the switcheroo where she's not really the villain because i was surprised they went all in on making her a villain nope they just do it I think I'm kind of in the middle of you two where, and again, this might be a pessimism thing, and it definitely was part of it in that scene. I think by the end of the movie, I kind of got a little closer to your side. But I, and I don't know if I have much of a hill to stand on or, you know, this is the hill I'll die on either, but I just didn't think, I was trying to figure out what the story was. And Wanda won babies. It doesn't, I'm not that stupid. (laughs) In a way of, it's that, it's the argument we've made before about is this telling an actual story or is this putting john krasinski as mr fantastic in it and putting things people know in a movie i think part of what helped the movie for me was i thought it was going to be nothing but fan service bullshit i thought we were going to be jumping from universe to universe to universe to universe and this might be a bit of like i'm cutting it a bit of slack because like i said there's really only three universes including the main Earth 199,999, also known as Earth 616 for two movies. I was honestly surprised. And I think I cut a lot of slack because there's only that one extraneous bit where we get to watch a bunch of other superhero fan service crap fight Wanda, each following its own rules of how powerful Wanda is and how powerful they are. But like, I was mostly fine with all that. It wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. I had a point where, and I've been out of the superhero game in a long time, and honestly, I kind of, I mean, I guess I just read a superhero comic, but like during 
the Illuminati fight. I was just kind of sitting there being like, what is the point of this? Like, what is the story this movie wants to tell me outside of here are things you know and like? And there is a story there. I, I'm not, I'm selling it way shorter than it, it should be. I think the big thing is it is. I don't think there's like a grand scheme story for the MCU. I don't really think there's a, a grand scheme story for itself because I don't think it's really telling a Doctor Strange story so much as a story with Doctor Strange in it. Not that it needs to, but like it's not telling like a character story. It's just kind of like a set piece story. And I will say that like kind of what it is is it, it's purpose of being if that's what you're asking is probably is just like let's show the multiverse not necessarily let's fan service but just be like the this multiverse is a, thing. is a thing now and this is the movie showing the multiverse as a thing we had hints of it in loki hints of it with i mean not really hints but it's what if and then you know the multiverse coming in and the, the acknowledge of the existence of the multiverse in Spider-Man. But this is like, let's go to the multiverse. Yeah. And it felt like that was the story as opposed, and I think you just said this, but like that was the story as opposed to anything really. Yeah. It's not really narratively interesting. WandaVision. It's not really saying anything about strange. It's the dark hold is not really a thing. America it's Chavez kind of is like, like a McGuffinish yeah. kind of thing. Like, yeah. Kyle was complaining about how she's not portrayed the same as she is in the comics. Which is true, but she is literally the bus that drives them from one multiverse yeah. to the next. She's a MacGuffin. <laughs> mm -hmm. I think she was good at it, mm -hmm. but she was a MacGuffin. But I think maybe going in kind of what we just said, where like the movie is made to just like, here is the multiverse. Take that however you will. And I think that's something that, again, goes in favor for me. Some of this is probably, I'm I'm getting burnt out on Marvel. It took a while to get there. I, I'm watching a movie a week. Yeah. Definitely did it. But I'm getting burnt out, and I'm kind of at the point where I told Kyle, he's like, you know, the, the stuff doesn't make sense. This doesn't make sense. That doesn't make sense. Because as we all know, Kyle is famous for complaining about in Pacific Rim how the rocket punch doesn't have fuel. Was he the guy who complained about why you would have a sword when you have, like, a gun or something? Probably. He, <laughs> and I was like, he well, has these weird hills. Cool. I'll talk about, like, he's always like, I don't understand you. I don't understand what you like and what you don't and it feels like it's all over the place and i'm like Kyle, i don't understand you because you will tell me that i am over analyzing shit and then you'll sit here and tell me that like what was the point of peggy carter being able to fight wanda when she was able to just like immediately kill black bolt and make his head explode and i was like because she's a, a fan book. favorite character and they want to have this cool fight scene and we'll never we'll probably never see live action peggy carter again so they want to do this fun fight scene with her i'm fine with that And he's like i don't understand you and i was just like my problems with logic i'll point out things that don't make sense like, yeah, she absolutely holds her own in a way that does not make sense versus everybody else fighting Wanda, because Wanda's powers seem to be in flux to do whatever she wants to do. That's like a superhero but, thing, though. Well, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. It's like, I'll point that stuff out. My problems come down when the inherent logic propelling the plot doesn't, like, works against itself. That's my problem with Loki. That's my problem with Endgame. That's some of my problem with Moon Knight. With the inherent logic, when the movie tells me, like, this is how something works, and then later on goes, never mind, don't think about that, that's where I have a problem. But with this, I'm just like, whatever. I just want to see stupid superhero bullshit. Like, I basically was sold at the beginning when Doctor Strange summons a giant monster hands to pick up a light post and shove it into Shumagorath's eye. <laughs> <laughs> and I was just like, yeah, I just want to see fucking magic. That fight at the end where they're sending musical notes at each other was awesome. And Kyle was like, yeah, but it was so stupid when he had to like pick up the sheet music and then the music flew off of it. And he's like, I don't understand the logic of it. At the end, when he needed to send one final note, he had to hit the piano so that it would make the note and then he could shoot it. None of that made any sense. I was like, Kyle, I just want to watch fucking magic notes fly at each other. It's like, it's so stupid. It's awesome. Oh, how far we've come. And like, that's where I'm at. I just want to see the dumb shit. Not even dumb, the silly shit. I, I think I just wanted to more like, narratively interesting story as opposed to just like a peek into the Because you're right. As far as the movie goes, it is basic movie and that's fine by me. It is just like, this is the, the, the plot. Like this is the MacGuffin that drives the plot. Here's the villain. Here's the good guy. And then here's the distractions along the way to make it last two hours. And I'm fine with that. But like, as far as the larger scheme in the MCU, it doesn't really propel Dr. Strange's story forward. It doesn't it doesn't cap off, like all of the Marvel stuff, it, it doesn't actually, like, follow up or conclude on the plot of, like, Wanda. Like, it just shows, like, the TV show happened, and now this. And I'm like, wait a minute, at the end of the TV show, she's supposed to be, like, a reluctant, like, I was actually the good guy, but I did bad things, but I feel bad. But in this one, she's like, I'm full-on crazy evil. <laughs> and the excuse it gives is, like, Darkhold makes you evil. Because that's what it does. And it's like, fine, it can corrupt you. Like, that's fine. But at the end, when she has the moment where she's like, the one Wanda touches the face of the other Wanda, and she's like, I made my kids cry. That's bad. I didn't like that. 
oh no maybe i'm the villain. I guess i'll kill myself and i was just like i mean it's fine but it's like it's like everything else in the mcu it's all hand wavy like the ends justify the means so oh, i just i had a t- talking point that i wanted to mention and i sorry sent, no it was me i forgot it uh you didn't forget it for me no i like the big be- so the beginning i was worried that the red thing was shuma gorath even though i remembered that the shuma gorath existed oh this is what i was gonna say can i let you in on a little secret uh sure whisper it to me is there a second doctor strange movie or is this a second doctor strange movie this is the second doctor strange movie he hasn't had any others he's just shown up and stuff okay i could not remember if doctor strange had a second movie (laughs) (laughs) because they brought back memorable fan favorite christine who's fucking nothing in any movie so That's that's whatever. That's fine. My thing was when they brought back Baron Mo- Mordo, and then Doctor Strange is like, "That's Baron Mordo. He hates me and dedicated his life to." Stop I had him. no we idea who the fuck Baron that. Mordo was. Okay, <laughs> for I was me, like- I was like. I was like, what do you mean he's dedicated his life to trying to stop you? At the end of your movie, he goes off and goes, I'm mad at you, Dr. Stephen Strange. I'm going to kill all the wizards, I guess. And he kills one wizard, and then we never hear anything about him ever again. And I assume he's off just doing something, and Strange knows nothing about it. But apparently, they have had multiple fights in between movies. And for all I know, Baron Mordo might be dead in the normal movie verse. I, I couldn't remember uh, all nothing. Mads Mikkelsen's character's name. Mm-hmm. And I was like, is this like alternate universe Mads Mikkelsen? <laughs> no, I remember because he's... That's why I was like, was there a second movie him. I completely forgot about that like Baron Mordo was in it? And like the main no, Baron Mordo is the guy that helps train him. Remember when he was like, look at my cool shoes that give me <laughs> look, plus <laughs> look at one my jump. Fucking... And he like does the like skip across the sky thing. And then he's like, when do I get my cool fun article of whatever? How about Doctor Strange does not have to adhere to the uh, dress code of literally any fucking one else? He's arrogant. That's his stick. He's arrogant and smarmy. At the beginning of the movie when he shows up and I was like, he's still got the Eye of Agamotto on him. Does that even do anything? <laughs> the, it was just like the, the the case that held the time stone. The time stone doesn't exist. And then later on, it like opens up when he tries to like unlock the door or something. I was like, I guess it does something, but I don't know what. I thought it was just the time stone vessel, but they can't take it off of him because it looks cool. That's part of his his shtick. I mean, they... I like the new patch on his cape. <laughs> I like how it looks like the Superman symbol from like a weird. Yeah, it's so film. stupid. I love it. I like how at the wedding the guy shows looks up like a crazy, that you have to look up maniac who he is, and it's like, hey, it's from it's the guy from the first movie. And this is like, who the fuck is that guy? <laughs> Wait, the the shoveled guy who's like, hey, Dr. Strange, I also, you, know, you my fucked up my life, died. I lost my cats. He's from the first movie? Yeah, he is. Um, he's a neurosurgeon at Metro General Hospital where he developed a rivalry with fellow doctor working there, Stephen Strange. Don't you remember the memorable first movie that happened like 10 years ago? I did not know that. I assume that that guy was probably the guy from The Oath who is also a doctor that learns magic. And it, it was just like a name drop thing. I just assumed that's who he was. I didn't know. But he was like, he's just like shows up to this wedding looking kind of like a maniac. He looks disheveled. <laughs> <laughs> but it's just like, that was kind of my problem. And I was talking to a coworker on Friday about, um, he had seen Doctor Strange, I think, Thursday night. And uh, he was like, oh, like, you have to watch WandaVision if you haven't yet. Because that's like a big thing in it. And I was like, okay, yeah, I already watched WandaVision. Who fucking cares? And then they like just show up and he's like, it's Chris- it's Christine's wedding. And I was like, who the fuck is Christine? And then this guy sits next to him and he's like, do you remember me? I'm mad. And I'm like, who the fuck are you? Why- Stop pretending that anyone remembers this Doctor Strange movie. So in the movie's defense, the Christine <laughs> thing is all you, buddy. You just don't, like, you purged Christine all this Christine was a total non-burger in the first movie. Sure, but she is in the entire movie. Like, she is a non-character in that she has no real character. She's just love interest, but she is in the entire movie. She is part of, like, his, like, quote-unquote, barely functioning character arc. We had the so, same like, conversation This is what on if? you. Yes, Where because you didn't remember The show Christine was like, also, if. memorable fan favorite, Christine Palmer. And I was like, who? I don't care about this lady. That's on you. <laughs> no, it's on the films for not making her interesting. Sure, but there's also 200 billion movies, and you can't even remember what happened in... I can't even remember if there was a second Doctor Strange. Yeah, you can't... But you couldn't remember which Iron Man anything was. Like, you can't... They don't that's run together. Not Doctor, that's not on Doctor Strange, because every single one of these runs together for you. You can't remember anything. That's but not like, on me. You can call this out on any of these movies, and it's, that's it's on, on the, the fact that there are a billion movies universe. and you're watching all of them. That's on the universe. But it kind of goes into, like, the Thor Love and Thunder thing. His whole thing in that movie is going to be like, I no longer want to be a superhero. And I'm just like, dude, you had, like, three movies. I mean, it's it's the argument we always make, where it's just like, apparently, like, 
I mean, they have to be doing stuff in between movies, but there's like a million things going on in between movies. Well, there's nothing happening. When Doctor Strange is like, he says something about different superheroes and he's like, he said something like multiple bug, bug themed crime fighters. And I was like, there's one bug themed crime two, fi- fighter. Thank you very much. No, Ant Man is not a crime fighter. I mean, he's a superhero. Ant Man is a public menace who fought uh, at a at no spider man is a public menace at an, ant-man fought as other superheroes at an airport and blew up planes and then showed up in a bay like ant-man has not done fucking anything that anyone would look at him and be like that's a superhero and a crime fighter what about spider-man wasp? is the only spider-man is the only crime fighter in the entire universe what about wasp outside of like the government again wasp isn't a crime fighter she doesn't do that shit Are they all work criminals? for shield or they just like have powers and did one adventure are supervillains criminals? Yes, but there aren't supervillains in this universe. Like, okay, everyone's a crime fighter because they go and fight Batroc the Leaper who's doing a crime. But they're not, like, crime fighters. They're government task force, or they're just, like, they do their one adventure where they stop the person who's doing something to them personally. Spider-Man is the only one that actually stops a actual, just, like, crime as a vigilante crime fighter. It sounds like you need to talk to Doctor Strange. Doctor Strange, it's tedious and pedantic, but he's not wrong. <laughs> <laughs> my point isn't what he says isn't true my point is that the movies believe that there is more truth to that statement than there really is yeah and because the movies believe this is a world of superheroes that is it isn't that is constantly the aren't a super team it's bizarre and stupid to me and it that's where my like that's the hill i die on in in these is that there is like no cohesion and like actual like it wants to pretend that there's all this stuff happening that there really isn't. And like this movie doesn't really do a lot of that, but that's just what the MCU is to me. It's just like a bunch of like lies strung together by the big moments that make everybody clap. I know it's not fair to do it here because we'll do it in Thor Love and Thunder, but like just seeing that trailer and having him he- and hearing him say that, I was just like, dude, you did like four things. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, yeah, they were big, but it would be like, it would be a better line if he just said like, Thanos was like too much for me. I can't keep, I can't do that again. I'm done. And just like write it off. And everyone would be like, Oh, Th- Thor is such a bro. What a cool guy. He just, like, saved the world and had a brewski. But anyways, I think the, the Shuma Gorath fight was all right. I thought it was fun. Like you said, when he stabs him in the eye, that was cool. Everyone was like, whoa. Kyle was also saying that, like, pulling the eye out was, like, way more than anything. The, the whole Universe movie was, done. was way. That's what I mean by it was wild, is it just kept going. And that's, like... That's what I like about Raimi. I thought the Raimi stuff was going to be really toned down, but this felt like a Raimi movie. Like, I was going to make a joke and I forgot that at the beginning I was going to say, finally, we have a movie made by a director, but we do. In the MCU, this is the first one that feels like it has a a vision, like a distinct. He had like weird camera choices. He had like the zooms. Whenever the third eye appeared, there was a fucking guitar riff. Well, there was like scene transitions where they like dissolved over one another. There was good stuff. But so here's another talking point. Everybody talks about directors and stuff. And there's a there's a ton of bits in here that feel very Raimi-ish. And they should. I mean, it's Raimi. And I think the director has a lot of pull. But like, it's not like Raimi wrote this. Like, and I don't know how that process goes. But to be fair, a lot of directors don't write their movies. Right. It's like a script by someone else and then they come in and they put it to, to screen. And again, to be completely fair... And blunt, like, this is not any one person's singular vision. There are a billion animators doing what I assume Raimi is saying, like, this is what I want this to look like. And then they do the work. He's not holding the camera. He's not moving the lights. He's he's not animating. But I just never, 10, like, thousand different things. it's not like Sam Raimi was like, and then he's going to throw the thing at Shimogorath's eye and it'll fall out. Like, I mean, maybe you said, like, we'll have people animate it falling out or whatever. But, like, somebody wrote that scene. Like, somebody wrote... All the scenes that I associate with, like, like all the wild stuff. He doesn't necessarily, like, he could have had that pull. It could have just been, like, there's a fight with Shuma Gorath, and then he decides what the action in that scene Do you think all, like. the, all the Marvel scripts are just, like, Doctor Strange fights CGI Demon, Doctor Strange fights Shuma Gorath? I mean, it technically could be. Like, outside of, like, any moments that propel the plot forward, it's not like the script had to say, and then he stabs it in the eye and pulls the eyeball out. Raimi could have said, this is how I want the fight to end. I mean, it'd be interesting. I, I think scripts have been leaked. It'd be interesting to see. Because, I mean, like, again... Did somebody write, and then Scarlet Witch blows Black Agar Boltigan's brain out? That was weird in that I don't understand how Black Agar Boltigan's powers work, because... He talked loud. He talked quiet, but it loud. No, I get that. But when she seals his mouth, I was like, okay, but he still has, like, a throat and vocal cords. He would just talk, and I assume, like, blow his 
mouth out. And then I was like, well, he wouldn't blow up his own lips when he speaks normally. Like if he whispered or whistled, like it's not like he would blow his lips off. So he has to be resilient to his own powers. So I guess he wouldn't blow through his mouth. But then I was like, but then how would he blow his brain up? Because he, I would assume he's resilient to his own abilities everywhere. It's not like, can he talk at like his a weird arm thing. and blow his arm off? Yeah. I don't know. It was just an effective thing. Oh, yeah. In the end, it, it was just like, she makes it so that his voice can't come out, so he blows up his own brain, and it's fine. It's here. We're not here to think about it. We're here for it to be a, that's the cool way she kills him differently from everybody else. But even like, Peggy Carter getting cut in half, and Doctor Strange landing on the, the iron fence, and like, all these bits. And I, I, maybe I'm misremembering or making it up, but wasn't there a thing where Disney was had to tone down Raimi's Doctor Strange. All I remember hearing was that there were reshoots, and that's where I thought they were scrubbing his voice from it. But I was just kind of thinking, like, is this written in the script? As a script, is this just a wild movie? And they said, probably. Yeah, let's I think go he has it. a lot of pull in some smaller moments, but I would feel like probably the Black Agar Boltigan thing is in there. The Peggy Carter thing's probably in that script. They probably, like, plan out those fights. But, I mean, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I don't, I don't know either. It was just something where I... It's not like the script is law. Right. And I, I know that. And I I understand that, like, Sam Raimi has pull and people, you know, things get changed and it's a product made by billions of hands. But it was just something I, I deliberately thought of watching the movie going, somebody wrote this, though. Like, Sam Raimi didn't write this. And he probably had... I mean, he definitely had pull here and there, but... It's it's a wildly written Marvel movie from a what happens on screen standpoint. And it was it was kind of neat because as like the 50 second Marvel thing we watched, I felt like anything could happen. Nothing mm -hmm. was off the table. And I just like for sitting through 51 of these things going, I get it. I get what you do. You know, we we talked about Moon Knight felt the most different in this. I just kind of said, I really don't know what is coming next. And I'm on board. This movie, I was like, I hope this is what the rest of the movies follow. But honestly, I feel like this is an outlier. Love and Thunder is probably going to feel like Ragnarok. The next Spider-Man movie is probably going to be another big nut-busting adventure. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like this movie is unique. I, I am very excited for the next Doctor Strange movie, especially if Raimi is still on, on board if and when that happens. We were joking before, earlier in the week, when all the articles were coming out where it was like, this is a true horror Marvel movie. But there was like some genuinely good thrills. There's some good stuff. When she's attacking Karmatosh, yeah. I liked when she like whispers in the guy's ear and they go back to that thing she hasn't done since her very first appearance where she does the spooky witch thing and whispers at people. I liked when she was like popping through the puddles, when she like pulls herself out of the reflection and she's all all, like broken and she pulls herself together there's some really good stuff it's like really effective visuals too and and again because you don't your sense of security of marvel movies is kind of taken away with this one where again i just didn't know what would happen and you know i didn't need to i mean there was some like young kids in the movie and i was just like this is kind of intense i mean it has a pg-13 rating for a reason but like when she pops out of the the smoke when patrick stewart is trying to save Elizabeth Olsen. Oh, yeah. And then, and, like, like, snaps, snaps his, his neck. neck. I was just like, this is intense. And again, like, blowing up Black Agar Boltigan's brain and then following that up immediately by, like, shredding John Krasinski. It's weird. Until you started talking and bringing up what was happening, Kyle said that, too, where he said, like, it was kind of, like, a lot and intense for a Marvel movie. And I was thinking, like, eh, not really. Oh, but it's I think super I just kind of, like, I think I just accepted it. Like, I think when I was watching it and I was just like... Yeah, it's just kind of like doing the stuff, and this is like the horror-ish no, kind of crap that this movie does. But I think you're right. There is like a lot that happens. Although, I think similar stuff, I don't think anything is so extreme. I think it's extreme that it's all in this one movie, but I don't think any one moment is so extreme that it isn't elsewhere. It's not like we haven't seen violence and beheadings and crap happening. And I mean, Thanos gets his head chopped off at the opening moments of Endgame. And, and I mean, tone goes a long way. And, like, I mean, the other part of it is that you want Thanos to lose. And it's it's kind of filmed as a, just a thing that happens. But, you know, on paper, a beheading and a head explosion are probably similar. But I think it's hard to kind of argue that the scene in Endgame, while a beheading is 
an inherently intense thing. It wasn't as intense as watching like John Krasinski scream out in pain as his like flesh has turned to ribbons. See, I thought that was comical and kind of goofy. That reminded me of when Thanos snapped his fingers and turned Mantis to ribbons. Like I didn't think that one was that was not something that I would tally as an extreme scene. I thought so. I mean, it's... I also don't remember him screaming out in pain. I remember him being like, ah, but I don't remember it like being anything more intense than like, I don't know if he got like punched or something. It also comes after the Blackagar Boltigan thing. And maybe it is just since it all happened in this one movie. But I kept kind of, even when Doctor Strange lands on the iron fence, I was like, I mean, they could have easily not done that. It's a, it's, it's a conscious decision to have that kind of intense visceral moment because i just thought he would fall i thought he was going to fall on the ground and christine you know she doesn't know which doctor strange it is i mean she still doesn't but to then impale him on the fence i don't know that's i mean that's intense it's on fence and it's i think it also helps at least for me because this has kind of other than and this is going to kind of go against what i just said but other than the illuminati scene where they're all where it is a straight up superhero fight i think it does feel creepy for the majority of it. Whereas all of the violence and the other stuff, like you said when I mentioned the John Krasinski thing, feels superhero violence. But I think all of this felt a little more, like I said, visceral just because of the general tone and, and how it was played. Because like watching Captain Marvel like shoot electric beams at her, and even, I mean, getting crushed, I guess, again, probably just in, you know, repetition or whatever. But that whole scene felt, to me, tonally out of place because that's where everything kind of stopped having weight to it because they were all kind of just jumping around and you know Peggy Carter's just jumping around doing superhero stuff Captain Marvel's doing superhero stuff and it kind of comes to a harsh jolt when she gets cut in half but like it felt a little lighter in in that small moment of that fight for me and even in you had mentioned the like musical note fight that felt a little that felt a little lighter but yeah I liked him fighting Shumagorath I thought it was funny when he Doctor Strange calls some beast to like eat a car that's been thrown or something. Yeah, I like faintly remember there being like it was like a like a ghosty sort of like demon thing. And I was like, did Doctor Strange know no one was in that car? <laughs> and same thing with with the buzz saw. He saws the bus in half, and I thought, couldn't you have just like sent that somewhere? Isn't it more dangerous to just saw it in half and then not know where it's going? <laughs> I mean, I guess if you send it somewhere, you don't know where it's going, but you can, like, send it to the ocean or whatever. But it was nice. I said it was slow at the beginning, but at the very beginning, it does. it is nice that it kind of starts in, like, media res. Yeah. And I, it does hit the ground running. And only after he meets America Chavez is when I felt like it kind of slowed down and I was like... See, I guess for me, I just felt like it, like, kept going. Like, you start off in media res, then you go to the wedding where it slows down for not very long because it immediately cuts to the... Shumagorath fight and then after that you have like a slow bit where they talk for a couple minutes where Chavez basically says like I'm the plot bus here's the plot and I'm carrying it places and then I'm, later I'm going to carry you and then they bury the body and I went that's going to come back later and then I completely forgot about it until like the second that he said like I don't have to be alive when he said I, I don't have to be alive and they had like a Sam Raimi goofy soundstage set of the burial I was like this is going to be awesome and then his hand burst out and I was like this is exactly what I want <laughs> That was the first, like, <laughs> guffaw. I was like, all I want is zombie. And then, like, he just kind of shambles up. And I was like, I just want zombie Dr. Shane to shamble up to Scarlet Witch. And this is this is all working for me. Then he has, like, the ghoul cape. I mean, it is good. It is good stuff. I love how he looks like, he looks like a Raimi zombie, too. Mm -hmm. Like, he looks like a dude in makeup. But in a way that's good. It has, like. Like, in a way that, that works for It me. looks like a prosthetic. Yes, but in the best type of and way. So something I wanted to talk about, well, I didn't want to talk about, but here we are. I think there's some poor CGI in this. I do. And too. you can write some of that off in that like 99% of the movie is CGI. I saw something on Twitter the other day where somebody like posted a shot from like Shark Boy and Lava Girl. And it's like, this is just what all Marvel movies look like to me anymore. And it's just like kids on a green screen. <laughs> and it's not wrong. I don't think it looks that bad, but I do. There are several points where I was just like, oh, this is a little too green screeny, or like certain characters would become CGI. I can't remember what it was, but there was some point where two people, maybe it was when they were barreling through the universes. There was some point where like, there was a point where I was just like, that CGI doesn't look fully rendered. Some of the like, hovering it didn't look like it and flying looked weird to me. And there was some really good CGI too. And it's one of those things where, you know, you don't, your brain doesn't notice good CGI. Mm -hmm. And again, the movie is 99% CGI. So 
you're going to run out of budget at some point. But there was just a couple points where, especially at the end, there was a scene, I think almost all of like Elizabeth Olsen's like hovering looked really weird to me. Also, speaking of hovering, how about when normal mom Elizabeth Olsen wakes up in the weird dimension thing at the book? And then she's just like, okay, bye. And just like flies out of the movie until the end. Wait, what? So Scarlet Witch possesses mom Wanda, right? This might have been when I went to the bathroom. Because I have no idea what you're talking about. I went to the bathroom when they go through the underground tunnels where what's her face is Christine. It's just like hitting buttons along the wall that make more and more blast doors come down. Yeah. When they go, th when they unlock the door with the watch and they walk through and they go, there's the book we need, whatever the it book was, of the book of Ashanti. When they see that, I went, I feel like the movie's going to slow for a bit. I really got to pee. Like I cannot hold this any longer. Yeah. You missed the worst part. I ran down and when I came back. They were walking through like the destroyed world and they were talking about America being gone. And I was like, oh, I guess Scarlet Witch got America at some point. I was only gone for what felt like a minute and a half. Like I was in and out, but I guess I missed what you're talking about because I think that sounds right. You missed the part where Doctor Strange like takes the book and then Scarlet Witch destroys it, takes control of the child. You missed like a crucial moment in the movie. <laughs> oh, cool. Everything felt like big stuff was happening, and I was like, I don't know, this seems like the moment where it might slow down for a bit. You were the, the one who told me that it's is... nonstop, and it was. Yeah, and then, so, Scarlet Witch takes control of Chavez, and then, then she sends Doctor Strange and his girlfriend into the destroyed universe, and then she takes Chavez back to, like, the altar, and then it just goes back to, like, it shows Wanda wake up in the Book of Ashanti room, and it's just, like, huh. And then just weirdly hovers towards the screen, towards that door they all fell out of. <laughs> and then it cuts. <laughs> and I was just like, okay, bye. But it was goofy. I like how all that happens. And then she apparently goes home, hands both of her sons a Nintendo Switch, and then leaves the room. <laughs> also, how about Vision is nowhere to be found? She is like a single mother, apparently, in every alternate universe. <laughs> so I hate these kids. <laughs> It's like too saccharine. Can I tell you my put up right now? Those kids? Or my put down? Those kids? My put down is when they sing the fucking ice cream song. It's too saccharine. All I wanted I was to it. die. I don't. I, I know that like my friend has kids and she tells me about her kids all the time. And it's always sweet to hear her talk about her kids and how much she loves them. But she'll tell me stuff and she's like, kids just say the cutest thing. And I just love, they're so funny. I love everything they do. And it's funny to hear like kids the good stories parts. where they say something bizarre. <laughs> but like that song, I can understand if those kids popped out of my PP. I'd probably be like, how fucking adorable. I love these children. But I was just like, shut the fuck up. This song is awful. Especially when they were like, I want to start it. No, I want to start it. But it's a song with like three lines. It's, how the hell were they not supposed to sing it together? It's the buildup of, come here, we want to show you something. We really want to show you're you gonna something. You're going to love come it. You're going to love it. Please come here quick. And they're like, I want to tell her. I want to tell her. I wanna... And I was just like, fucking blow my brains out. <laughs> I I couldn't do it, you know. I was just and and we said it. And I'm sure if I had kids, I'd be like, oh my gosh, I know exactly what this is like, and <laughs> it works for me. But for me, I was just like, this is fucking nails on a and, chalkboard. I mean, even I think we said it in Wandavision too, where I was just like, these kids, those are kids not are not great. Good, <laughs> at acting. they are not. <laughs> and I could not handle. And when Scarlet Witch comes back and she's like, I'm your mommy now, and they're like, don't hurt us. I was like, can you just hurt them? I need. Just a little bit. <laughs> Just a they little bit. They need to I, learn. They need to learn to not act like this. I watched Moon Knight. I know it's okay in the Marvel Universe. You can hurt kids. It's fine. <laughs> you can do it. We watched Black and Girl <laughs> brain blow up. <laughs> I mean, I I couldn't do it. I couldn't. They were rough. And honestly, I had a different put up, or I had a different put down. And I don't know why this wasn't my put down. I think I burned it from my brain. <laughs> I was just like, get this shit out of here. But yeah, spoiler alert. That is... I like how we don't do spoilers for talking about a movie that just came out, <laughs> and we're sitting here and be like, hey, our, our final thoughts are two put ups on put down spoiler alert. Please proceed to this time code to not be spoiled on our put down, which is usually just like, I don't know, there's so much to choose from. <laughs> <laughs> I could really say a million things here. And I have a lot of put ups. You know, I think I know what my two are, but there are a I lot have of my two. I 
And honestly, I, I don't think it was that hard. I think there's a lot of good stuff in here, but I think there was I two, have two things that like, Yeah, I think two things stood out head and shoulders above the others. But what else? Is there? I, I didn't really catch a lot of what the different universes they they jump through were. I know there was an animated one. There's the paint one. There's one that looked like a noir universe. I don't know if I assume some of them have got to be actual references to real yeah universes but i couldn't tell you they fly by pretty quickly and a lot of them you don't get a look there's one that just looks like a normal universe but there is a uh a taxi cab or something that has a sign on the top it's a of taxi it. for evil dead yeah oh is it mm -hmm. okay i assumed it was something that would rec i thought maybe it was the raimi verse like the spider-man hmm. universe and it was going to be like the pizza place he worked no it was like an evil I, dead i couldn't read it it was like an gotcha. evil dead reference which like we complain about seeing like uh, it's the thing i know in a marvel movie but there is some, I was reading like trivia and stuff before we jumped on, and there is something to be said. I like a good director or writer nod. See, but that's not like, the Marvel, like, the thing I know f always feels distracting. It's blunt, too. <laughs> yeah. And in this, it's just like, I just want to do this like fun little thing for It's me. like, you're going to put a car in there anyways, just have it say Evil Dead on it. You know? Like, yeah. <laughs> and it, I mean, it didn't. It said like, it had some grindhouse thing. But yeah, I mean, I didn't really pay attention too much. I mean, it was a neat visual, but like I said at the beginning- when you were complaining that Kyle didn't know what universe they were in, I was like, it doesn't really matter. They can be anywhere. <laughs> yeah, but I, I just found it funny because they really only go to two. And they, like, and we they spend all our time. I think Chavez mentions. And he was like, all the universes were like, it was all just like there for whatever. And I was like, I don't know. They were all plot points. Like they go to two universes. The first one is where they go to get to the book of Vashanti. And the second one is where he gets the Darkhold, which is how he defeats Wanda in the yeah. end. Like, they're relevant. It's not like they're just there. Like, yes, the first one has gratuitous, like, fan service crap. But honestly, at that point, it was all fun. Like, I was on and board. And I with said that. it. I was, I was less on board, I think, because of the theater experience. And that's a me thing. That's a them thing. Because your theater experience sounds like my endgame experience, where it was just like, I, I also heard a cup drop and roll all the way down this aisle. And... There was some gasping moment that I rolled my eyes See, I never out. really had anything. I don't think it was Professor X. I remember people loved seeing John Krasinski. I don't know why. So there were rumors going around that Tom Cruise was in the movie and he was going to be playing the superior Iron Man, which is why we had the Ultron robots everywhere. Because mm -hmm. he was originally cast to be Iron Man and then he either backed out or whatever. He was like, I got to film Marvel. Maverick for eight years. So it was supposed to be like a stupid fan service -y thing. And that was like heavily rumored. And they said like he was on set. And I don't know if that was like. That's what was some cut. Kind of like. Tac yeah, I don't know if it was cut or if that was like a tactic that Marvel did to hide that John Krasinski. Like, hey, if we put out a bunch of. Yeah, it's like the conspiracy theory thing. Or if we just put out. There were tons of fan service things about John Krasinski being Mr. Fantastic. But I don't remember seeing anything. I didn't see anything that confirmed it. I only saw, like, people saying, like, he should play Mr. Fantastic. Look at this thing that I took where I photoshopped his head on the Chris Evans Captain America and then stuck a four <laughs> And it was a it. screenshot from the movie? No, no I'm kidding. No, I'm, sa I'm saying, like, I only saw stuff that people saying, like, this is my fan yeah. cast. And I was like, he's never going to do it. Although, like, when he showed up, I don't know why. When he showed up, I was like, huh, they did Reed Richards. And I thought I would care more, would be more surprised. And I was just kind of like indifferent to it i was actually more surprised so i didn't know any of this going in and the professor xavier thing is in a trailer let alone the fact that everybody was talking about but it. i don't listen to anybody and i didn't watch the trailer honestly professor x blew my mind more than john krasinski i wish i didn't know because i think i probably it probably would have and judging but from I mean, the I theater because he's in sounds like nobody else knew because they were like <gasps> oh my god i like that they play the little <laughs> Yeah, the little X Men cartoon theme that was fun, but like Krasinski's, and fine. it was fun to see Black and Purple again. I hope that he's not. I don't think he is. I can't imagine he is. I mean, I guess it, I can't imagine he is because why wouldn't? Like, part of me thinks you can get away with casting anybody in that scene. Oh, absolutely. But then you, but then you think about it and you say, well, Benedict Cumberbatch is literally every Doctor Strange, <laughs> and they plan these out to like. 2099 so like if they do know who their mr fantastic is why wouldn't they just make it him but then there's no reason it needs to be and i don't think it would be but i don't have any interest in it being him he was he wore the suit said his name he looked fine but it was like completely whatever i don't know if the black agar bolt again is the same it actor is. who played him on the tv show it is. oh it is well, that's cool it's not like they needed him to be some big name guy <laughs> he wears a mask and says two words i, I think something my thing with john krasinski and I, I believe I mentioned this before. You said you say to be fair a lot, and I say per my last email. I wish there was more no name actors. I I see something like John Krasinski as Mister Fantastic, and I just sit there, and the pessimist in me says, 
why wouldn't John Krasinski want to be in the biggest movie franchise of ever and make a bunch of money? When you say that, my thing is, I think that's why it didn't hit. Because I saw it and I went, oh, John Krasinski. But if it was a no-name thing, I probably would be like, oh my gosh, they did Mr. Fantastic. If some guy who I didn't know showed up and then he turned around and had the four on his chest, when he showed up, I would have been like, who is he? But since he shows up and I immediately recognize his face, I don't think I even bothered for a second to try and figure out who he was. So when he said Mr. Fantastic, I was just like, yeah, whatever, you're John Krasinski. Yeah, everything feels like, and again, it's just like, why wouldn't people want to be in these big movies? But it's so star-studded that I can't look away from... It's like breaks the fourth wall for me. It feels like a movie. Yeah. And I remember when Marvel movies used to cast nobodies. I think Benedict Cumberbatch was the first... Kind of an, I mean, How about that's the th- same guy there from were other, that little BBC radio show? What of how far he's come. Capitol but Fraser, like everybody is. had been like doing something, but like a lot of them were like people who had never really been in anything huge. Robert Downey Jr. wasn't he hadn't been in anything in a while because I think it, he became Iron Man like shortly after his like rehab thing and everything. So he had been out of film for a while. I might be wrong. Yeah, but, I was like, trying to think like when Tropic Thunder came out. But like there wasn't really like a lot of these people. I remember they would cast nobodies. That was like part of the hook. I remember was like they would reveal who it was. And it was like someone from like a TV show that a handful of people have seen or like someone who is brand new and never been seen. Or like Chris Evans was in movies, but he's not like the action star. Yeah. But now it's just like John Krasinski, neat. Okay, got it. I don't know. I would hope when they do Fantastic Four that it's not him. How about at the end, whoever the, who is it that plays Clara, whatever her name is? Clea? Oh, Clea. That's it. Clea. Charlie's there on? Yeah. I couldn't remember who it was. When she showed up. And it was something I was like, it's not like they wouldn't put her th- put her in the next movie, as I assume they're setting up. But it was also something where I was just like, that just felt like she wanted to be in a movie. And they said, here's a role that we don't really care. She was like in. on set that day. And they're like, hey, put on this. And that's kind of what John Krasinski felt like. That's how it feels like to me. He felt like, he, but he also like his role his, or his performance felt like he was phoning it in. And honestly, I think the choice was probably I'm the Reed Richards. That's like distant. Yeah. I'm only thinking science things, so I don't really have a a personality. But it felt like he just kind of walked onto set and said his lines. Mm-hmm. I mean, like I just said, it feels like he was there to just like you know he has pull in Hollywood and make that Marvel he, money. It, well, he has pull in Hollywood, and somebody said, "You want to go watch him film a Marvel movie?" And he said, "Yeah, sure." And then he was on set, and they're like, "Oh, we should put John in here. Do we got a costume for John?" How about all I could think about when Clea showed up at the end in the credits? Was that like Twitter post where somebody said, you watch the end credits and then a blue guy shows up and somebody goes, oh my God, it's Blargo. <laughs> <laughs> All I can think of that was that. Or I'm just like, it's fucking Blargo. God damn. Especially because like when she shows up and is it Harry Styles who shows up as Eros in uh, yeah, I think so. Eternals? Like that. But they show up and they look more comic booky too. Like she shows up in like a bright purple and purple white light one thing. And I was just like, like you look like someone who is showing up because you're never going to show up again and they can make you look comic booky without worrying And about then they it. like comically jump into a portal. <laughs> And I was like, Strange's uniform in this is a little bit. I think it, I didn't think it was that bad. There's a scene where he's like, it's a little more colorful where you get a good look at it. And I, I was satisfied with it. And maybe I'm just it's got like the weird cross thing on it. Yeah. That I don't think was in his original one. It'd it's, be nice if there was a little some, brighter, some yellow threading. He's still not wearing the fucking gloves. Yeah, it'd be nice if there was gloves and yellow threading. But it wasn't too bad for me. Well, and I also was a little disappointed when they go to the Illuminati universe and they see the statue. He's got the big things that I love popping off his yeah. collar and when we get the flashback i was like i can't wait to see how they do the comic book like every time they've done a comic book accurate costume it's always as a joke it's like someone's halloween costume or it's like a weird one-off scene yeah. or someone like pointing at me like that like i think stupid. i heard it's in the drawing. thor trailer so like, there's a one of his past selves has like a more comic accurate mm-hmm. thing i was hoping we'd see that and then we get that scene and he's not wearing his cape and i think it's reed richards or black bolt someone is holding like something draped over their arm. I was like, I think that's supposed to be his cape. And I was just like, why not put it on him? Just like for this one fucking scene, make him look like a dipshit. Hey, like, come on. <laughs> I have nothing more to say about this particular point. Not the one you just said, but the one I'm going to bring up. How about when they like dance, when he dance fights with Baron Mordo in the corridor? I have nothing to say about it. It was fine. It was. That was where I was like, oh yeah, he trained to like actually like do martial arts. But like arts, the music changes to like a disco beat or, or like a club beat. Oh, I don't remember Yeah, that. it was like... <laughs> Not that. I remember early on, it might have been during the Scarlet Witch siege on Kashmatal or whatever it Kashmir. is. Kashmir? I was thinking, the music feels different. It feels more Raimi. That's because it was Danny Elfman. Which, to be fair, is Danny Elfman. Yeah. It felt like that, and I was like, oh, the music's different. This really does feel different than a Marvel movie. And then the rest of the movie, none of the music was really bad, but they were like, then it just felt more MCU-ish music. 
but how about when they get to the Illuminati universe and they step on the thing that says, like, and then hey, anybody can just your watch your... to fucking everybody. <laughs> yeah. Anybody can watch your most and precious nobody moment. turns and looks. What a weird, I thought that too. I could understand for Stephen Strange's thing, he's just like at dinner, but like they do. America's thing was like her parents being ripped from her. <laughs> well, it's also like a fucking alien universe <laughs> where everyone's wearing weird clothes and then a fucking gigantic star portal pulls everybody in and they're screaming and no one stops and looks at that and goes, what the fuck is going I on? I mean, that there? is such a dangerous thing. It could be any, you're, you're like. Most crucial memory or whatever. It could be anything. <laughs> what if you don't want to remember? Plus, it it makes it a point to say that it has, like, a cost, but there's mm -hmm. no way to pay. Like, it just shows you. It just does it. <laughs> it was just a weird decision to make there. Plus, like, I mean, I guess you need America to have a backstory, but I don't think I needed America to have a backstory. It's fine. It, it's it's it, more about it, how it's presented to me than what it is. I think that's true, that it is just, like, kind of shoehorn, because that's also, like, that kind of shoehorns, like, Stephen's little emotional bit at the end, or not. Well, his his thing with Christine and the watch being the lock, yeah. that it throws that in as a, like, this is where we got to get this information in, so here we go, and that is just, like, we need to explain America, so this is where we do it, but it does feel like it's there to make her not just the plot bus, yeah. but it's also done in such an awkwardly strange way and when strange stands on it i thought what was going to happen was he was going to be like oh i'm going to learn the history of the strange of this universe like it's going to be like you know, think, yeah it thinks you're it's not reading his mind it's like reading his dna and then accessing some kind of archive because it's like we remember it so you don't have to so i thought it was like some kind of weird thing where like on this universe their memories are downloaded or yeah. something but i thought yeah. the bruce campbell cameo was fun both of them yep i like at the end when he speaks directly to the camera i like oh, that, that too that was good stuff I mean, I think all the all the fights are decent enough. Like I said at the end, when he has like the ghoul cloak, that was fun. That was great. When he just like starts like grabbing all the ghouls like they're dogs on leashes <laughs> as a zombie man, and he's trying to make twenty bucks on a Monday. <laughs> I mean, him shambling up to that mountain, I was just like, I'm. I'm it was great. Buckled in, Sam Raimi, take me there, Raimi, take me away. I was fully on board. Yeah, Wong is. <laughs> this is a me thing. It b blows my brains. That BD Wong plays Wong. <laughs> I think that every, every time, time he's on screen, I'm just like, that's your real name. <laughs> <laughs> you can't do like, that. That's illegal. I'm like, what is this? Like some sort of like improv sitcom where we have to we have to name everybody <laughs> their real name so that they can like not have to worry about remembering who anybody is. I just like every time he's on screen, I'm like, you're playing your own name. <laughs> He was fine in it. I feel like he lost a ton of weight. He looks good. At one point, I think I just like didn't notice it until a later scene, but there's that one one point the camera like cuts away from it and cuts back and his hair was like longer and combed over and I thought hey, shoot. wasn't he like buzzed really short? And I was like that can't be. He had to have had that hair and I just didn't notice and I just know in the other movies his hair was shorter. I think in his first appearance it was buzzed. Okay, because I was like looking at it and I was like there's no way that got like no one noticed that he had different hair. Like, I know that, like, you can do reshoots and someone doesn't, like, necessarily comb their hair the same way or maybe they have to put on a wig. But, like, going from buzz to, like, a full-on, like, combed back couple inch do was something I was like, that doesn't just get, like, that doesn't slide by. But maybe it was. Hey, there was that, there's a the Starbucks I, cup in Game of Thrones. Yeah, but again, that's different. There's a there's a dramatic difference between, like, that haircut is the same as, like, being like, we're going to reshoot this scene, but we lost the shirt that you were wearing that said, I love New York, so instead you're going to wear the shirt with Heathcliff, and we'll hope nobody knows this. <laughs> that's the samurai cop wig. Yeah. Um, I'm the problem, but I think, I mean, I could watch, like, a little, I think. B.D. Wong has so much charisma. I think he's I fun. think he's a blast. I hope Strange never becomes Sorcerer Supreme again. I think he's fun. I think his kind of like, I think their little like back and forth is fun. And it's almost entirely him because Strange speaks to him the same way he speaks to literally everybody else. But I like that Wong doesn't put up with his shit. Like, Wong is smarmy, but I don't know. He he just has way more charisma. I think he's smarmy too strange, but he also like... He's kind of friendly towards everybody else, or at it's least... A, it's more of a banter than, like, an least. asshole. I like him, too. I like him a lot. I like him enough that I would like to see him have a larger role and or his own movie or show. And that is always something that is, like, weird. But, like, since, in the end, he's doing spells, Strange is doing spells, does it really matter which one? Strange is just a costume at this point. His name is the better name in the title, but, like... Yeah, I mean, he's he is the, the headliner. But it'd be nice to have Wong have, like, when we do this third one, like, if Strange is doing off doing his thing with Clea, have half the movie Wong doing his thing. I want to see 
see more. Well. I do too. Like I said, because he's also competent. Like I said, I'm the it's, problem. It's fun to watch him do. I'm stuff. the problem, and I don't know. I'm sure he could carry a show. I don't know what story I need Wong to tell. Yeah, I'm there too. But I'm just like I guess I could do for like just like a 30 minute episode, you know, and like a what if situation where they just had like a, t- a nine episode series where they said, here's a Wong. You know, we just kind of spend a day in the life of side characters we have like wong and other side characters flash thompson when it comes down to it there's no reason he can't do all the spells strange can do right Ex- except i guess fly because that is now limited directly to but the no world, one's which may be true but no one's going to a wong in the multiverse multiverse of madness movie yeah <laughs> What's wrong with the multiverse? I was about to say, Doctor Strange, something's wrong. <laughs> something's wrong. And, he, and, like, Doctor Strange has to, like, Wong made, miscast some spell, and he's in, like, Strange just walks into a room, and he just hears Wong's voice, and he's like, I cast a spell, and now I'm, like, a weird thing. Find me. <laughs> something's wrong. That took <laughs> so- you a long time. That's why I had to say it at the end, to reiterate that that is a pun. A different, like, more of a pun. Like, it's something's wrong. But also something here is Wong. Give me give me a, like a little 30 minute thing with Wong on his day off trying not to deal with anybody's crap and just ignoring calls from Doctor Strange. And it's called Sorry Wong Number. I'm laughing. I really am. I try. I wasn't laughing because I was trying to follow up. I was trying to give you a little yes and and I got none. <laughs> Yeah, I'm looking through his his little Marvel Cinematic Universe dot fandom dot com page. It's like his hair literally grew. Like he just stopped cutting it from the first movie, and it just like grew out through like in all of his appearances. It's like a little longer, a little longer, a little longer. They made a big deal about the giant Minotaur being there, and then he was just a thing in the background. I thought he was going to be a character. Even the woman who like sacrifices herself. I didn't know who the hell she was. She was just in another scene earlier. Yeah. I, I, I don't know. That's how kind of all these go for me. And I mean, to a lesser extent, what I was talking about with, I, I cannot remember who's Dr. Strange's girlfriend, Christine. I keep wanting to say Charlotte, but it's all just like stuff where I'm like, I'm sure I've seen you once before and everyone acts like you're a huge part of this universe. I don't know who you are. <laughs> but yeah, you mentioned the, the bull. I forget his name, but how'd you like to be that guy who like voices the bull? And then in the credits, when everyone has shown with their name with their picture, it's just your name and this bull head man. I think that's fine. Oh, it's Rintra. No, I just think it's funny to be like, that's not my face. Like, why would it be? He He's not in the film. It's minor. But again, this movie really just went for it in a lot of ways that really worked for me. At the beginning, when we are revealed America's powers, she's being held by the tentacle demon and it's holding her in a, like a star shape. And then she summons this the star behind her and i was like is that the only time we're gonna see her make a star portal because that's part of her her deal in the comics is when she makes portals she like punches portals through dimensions that are shaped like stars and i was like is that the only yeah i know i like know america chavez but i've never really read anything with her i've read a couple things with her i like her but when they when they did that i was like is that how they're gonna do the star because everyone's too ashamed to just do the dumb comic book thing like silly thing but then later on she's doing stars still so i was i was fine with it but i was really worried there i i can't remember i think she also has like flight and a couple she's like super strength and vulnerability and flight i think plus teleportation but i don't really remember for certain maybe she can't fly but that was another thing where i was just like i feel like everybody has like the same power set like toned down power sets and i didn't really care that at the end she was like i'm gonna study magic and that's fine but i was just like why your thing is like the star portals do we need you to do magic too yeah and there's nothing necessarily wrong with it but i'm just like I don't need to see you in your next appearance. Summon, have your like, multiverse weird... ability. Just have you be the the girl that flies around and punches things really hard. That's fun. Anything else? I think that's kind of everything. I was surprised that I knew Peggy Carter was going to be in it. I don't remember if that was from I a trailer or a leak or what. But I thought it was going to be the Peggy Carter of What If, and it's not. And I also, in the trailer... We saw the evil Doctor Strange, and I thought it was the Doctor Strange of What If, and it's not. It's just I was wondering if it was Doctor Strange. Similar. It was like basically the same universe, but not the same Doctor Strange. It was just another Doctor Strange that did the same thing, but the Watcher didn't come afterwards and say, "Hey, want to team up? You want to be besties? It's gonna be cool." That's all I really got. Yeah, I I liked it. I think that's all I got. I mean, we're probably miss missing talking about a bunch of like beats and fights and stuff like that. But honestly, all the fights were pretty good, and I think we touched on. Like the big, cool things in those. Oh, wow. 
So, Seth, give me two put-ups and a well, put-down. Well, Andrew, my first put-up is... I like the end fight between zombie Doctor Strange and Scarlet Witch. And he has his little ghoul cloak. And that was fun. And, like, that starts from when his hand burst out of the grave. And I was on board. Uh, my second put-up is... I like all the like horror stuff when Scarlet Witch is chasing him. There's a lot of good visuals during that whole sequence. There's a lot of good fight stuff going on there. Some fun power usage and things like that. Just a lot of really effective visuals. It was it was a blast to watch. My put down is going to be those damn kids who are going to skirt by on Marvel money for the rest of their life, and I'm jealous. But my other put down that was going to be in my original, and I didn't really talk about it much. I am on Kyle's side. I did not like the music fight. Really? That was too much for me. I didn't think it was all that interesting in any... Fo- like, him having the the music... I wasn't on Kyle's train of thought where I was like, I don't understand how any of this works. I think it was, like, a neat comic book thing and, like, throwing music at each other. But it was kind of a one-trick pony. And it, it's not like it was dragged out super long. But I just kind of stopped caring. I will say, I was hoping it was going to turn into, like, the wizard's duel of the What If episode. And they were going to do more, but it was just a music fight. But I I liked it all, and I got it got a, a chuckle out of me when he just summons the one note and sends it flying. I thought that. So, first put up for me, I like that music fight. I, I think know it's you fun. do. I agree that it's one note. Hey, yo! But it is like one thing that goes on a little... It wasn't too long for me, but it is one thing that just... I wish, I wish there was more variety. But they do do a lot of different stuff with that one idea. I like when he shoots a bunch of... When Good Strange shoots a bunch of notes at him, and e- Evil Strange like summons a... Uh, a Stanza. Uh, yeah, to stick them all in. I thought that was and cool. Then, then I thought Evil there was a lot Strange of fun shoots ideas. shoots them back, and Strange just has like a bunch of stanzas out. I thought it looked goofy when Strange shot him with all the music notes, and then it like zoomed in in slow motion or whatever, and it just like showed him hitting him. That was weird. It is, but it was like a Raimi thing that I was just like, for the first time, I was like on board with all, the all of Raimi's jet. Stick. My second put up is honestly, it's Zombie Doctor Strange, but I'm going to do something different and just say, I really liked Scarlet Witch's attack on the base. I liked her like whispering in, in the guy's ear. I liked her like the, the smoke she summons. I like her like going through the mirrors and grabbing at everybody and popping through the puddles of water. I thought all of that was real. I like when they're like cover up the water and I was like, wouldn't she just be able to grab the towel and pull that through and then come out? But I thought all that was super cool. Is Wanda dead? Is, hey, Dan Slot, is Wanda dead? I'm sure she is dead for all intents and purposes. It seems like she dies, but I'm sure she'll, she can show up. Because there was like possession stuff. They throw enough money. And there it. was a point in this movie where I thought the evil red demon beast was like possessing i know they said like it's all witchcraft stuff but there was like something in the back of my brain that was like they can't just like make that's what i kept thinking the entire movie that they were going to pull a switcheroo and it was like nightmare or someone else was controlling her or like yeah especially because they talked about possessions and stuff like that when they first mentioned the dream possession thing i was like so are you saying that she's being like our wanda is being possessed by an evil wanda somewhere else right but then it was like no she's full-on evil but my put down is going to be the kids singing that fucking ice cream it's song. The worst. Like, just pencils in my ears, just make it stop. It was horrible. And honestly, every scene with those kids, even outside of just the kids, I don't really feel like Wanda earns her, her crap. She has all those scenes where she's like, you broke the rules and you're a hero, but I break the rules and I'm a bad guy. And I'm like, you are. <laughs> you didn't, are you? I mean, <laughs> what is going on? But yeah, didn't care for those kids. I agree with, I think it was good to turn Wanda into the villain. It was, I mean, one, it was kind of neat yeah. to see, I mean, we talked about Moon Knight where everybody kills everybody, but it was kind of neat to just see Wanda deteriorate and just be like, fuck it. I'm just going to take what I want. My thing is I just like, like all the Marvel stuff, I just didn't really feel like it earned that. No. And I feel like it worked backwards from where WandaVision ended. It felt like this is where she's going to redeem herself. And then her next appearance is like, nah, I'm going to like go even harder into this. Which makes all the stuff in WandaVision where... It does kind of redeem, like the show feels like it redeems her. Kind of weird. Yeah. Why not just stick with that? Why not end on WandaVision being like, you know, I don't think you're doing good things, Wanda. And she's just like. It really doubles down into being like, no, there's two other villains that are yeah. real villains. I would have rather her just be like, I'm not evil because I'm, I, I, yeah, I, I, I justify it. But everyone else is just like, no, you justify it. And nobody else does. <laughs> this is a problem. Shout out to the movie theater ushers that probably hate Marvel movies because all they want to do is clean that stupid theater and everyone sits to the end of the credits. Why? Were they coming through the aisles? While no, that's what I'm saying. They there? can't. 
They li- uh, before everyone just left movies and then they could clean the theater <laughs> when everybody left. But now it, they don't have as much time because everybody stays the ten minutes it takes to scroll through millions of animator names. I'm sure they make up for that by having what by watching Marvel showing. movies free. Anyway, where do you put this in your standings? So I actually put this at number four. Ooh, high roller here. Below Ragnarok, Homecoming, and Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. I really enjoyed this, and I don't know how it would stand up to another viewing. At the moment. Like, I think it's 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 a fun movie. I actually really enjoyed my time with it. And it's it's brief for a Marvel movie. I at said, it, sl- I said it slowed down, but honestly, like... Aside from that portion, once they start multiverse hopping or go to like the other multiverse, I was just like, oh, this is nonstop now. I didn't like it as much as you. I put it at number one. Did you really? Yeah. You know what? I was sitting here. I scrolled up to the top. I did my thing where I went, okay, now to randomly throw a dart at this dartboard. And I scrolled up to the top knowing that it would be near the bullseye. And I sat there and I was like, sure as hell I like this more than Captain America the Winter Soldier. And I was like, do I like it better than Guardians of the Galaxy? And then I went, I liked Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 more than Volume 1. I thought I had like a bunch of problems with Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. Then I saw Homecoming and I was like, that was fun. And I was like, I think I just had more fun. I don't know if it's again. I mean, think about it. Spider-Man Homecoming was the 16th movie we watched. This is the 52nd project we've watched. Oof. I think it's just after all this time, this kind of did what I needed it to do. That's what I was telling Kyle. was like, at this point, I just want to see comic book shit. I just want to see, like, nonsense. Internally, I sat there every, like, 30 minutes just being like, this is wild. <laughs> this exists. This is wild. Oh, what are you, you going to watch? What's the next movie you're going to watch in the theater? Oh, yeah. So what trailers did I have? I had Jurassic World, whatever the hell, Thor, Love and that. Thunder. Top Gun Maverick, which I have never seen Top Gun. I have. I never got caught up in it. Lightyear. Mm-hmm. I had that one. And there was a movie. At I had the Mrs. Harris in Paris. Um, don't know that. I had a movie at the beginning that was a movie. I was like, oh, this looks fun. It's like a dumb like action Maverick. sort of movie, but I don't remember what it was. Oh, it's some movie that takes place on a bullet train in Tokyo. I don't know. Bullet What's he's been in? Train Movie 2022. Tokyo Bullet Train. Oh, it's just called Bullet Train with Brad Pitt. Ooh, the pit. The that looks there. fun. Okay. It looks like it could be either incredibly stupid or stupid fun. And I don't know which one it'll be. Yeah, I had Thor Love and Thunder, Mrs. Harris in Paris, Lightyear. There was like some stuff. They're doing like a sci fi fest and a retro fest. Oh, and Super Pets. League of Super Pets. Wrath of Khan, I think it's showing next month. And Ferris Bueller's Day Off is showing next month. But I think I would watch Lightyear. I'm going to have to watch Thor, so that's my answer, because I'm not going to watch Lightyear, but I don't know. I guess Lightyear was the one. I have no interest in Maverick. Mrs. Harris in Paris looked like a movie. Whatever. I have no interest in, in Lightyear. Neither do it I. It looks... I just don't understand its existence. I think out of the ones I saw, it's probably League of Super Pets, which I think isn't quite what I want. It looks like it's more just like kids' comedy with pets than like the fun dc movie what? i i want it's got that stuff in there but i'm sure that that's just bits in it and the majority of the movie is just like look at these talking animals be cute and adorable because otherwise i think i don't like jurassic world movies the two that i've seen i don't like them i don't think they're good but the second one was like so stupid that i couldn't stop talking about it and the third one looks like it could be just as stupid but also doing some of the things i want to see like dinosaurs running through a city they get a lot of passes for me because i like dinosaurs and I'm interested to see Dominion. I think that's going to be my vote, just because I'm I'm probably not going to see it unless if you go see it, I might just go see it to talk to you about it. But if you're like, ah, I'm not going to go, then I probably won't see it unless somebody wants to go. Did I watch a trailer that coming out in December? Oh, Avatar. Oh, that, that was, was the other one I had. I have, I have zero, zero interest, interest in, in Avatar. <laughs> I have below zero interest in that. <laughs> Take that, James Cameron. When it was playing, I was like, this is like nothing to me. <laughs> but I was looking at it, and I was like, the CGI does look impressive. The CGI like, looks impressive, but it's like 20 years too late. <laughs> yeah, it's just like, this is a movie that exists to be seen in a theater with your 3D glasses and go, ooh, ah, and I don't have any interest in doing that. I can't imagine there's a story to tell. There was no story to tell the first anything. One. I told Kirsten after my horrid movie theater experience that like when I was buying tickets, they had like an open caption theater and then like an I can hear theater. That sounds mean, but I don't know how else, a, a no caption theater. I don't know how else to put it. I don't know. Maybe, maybe a nicer way. way. I was like, this would be a funny bit. And then I said it. And I was like, that's mean. <laughs> 
I, I came home and I told Kirsten they also need to make a an extra one of the theaters has to show like a no talking theater. This is where the unfun people go. Put me in a fucking deprivation <laughs> tank. <laughs> Don't look at me. Don't touch me. There's Just only four fucking... seats in the, in the corners. <laughs> <laughs> you have to turn your phone in at the door. They duct tape your mouth shut. And then when you walk out, they have to rip it off. Each seat is in a box with the foam eggshells around for <laughs> to keep the sound in. I hate the theater. I hate it so much. I hate it. It's I awful. Hate you, Adam Driver. It's a terrible yeah, experience. The worst. Especially, I was it was killing me because I had to pee, and I was like, if I was at home, I could just pause this. I sat down, but I had to like run out and miss your dumb scene <laughs> where Scarlet Witch. That flies guy away. hummed the Marvel opening as the Marvel Studios title thing crawled up, and I was just like, I'm done. I'm out. <laughs> I'll see it another day. <laughs> God, I don't know how you watch a movie with kids and they sit there and they go, "What's that door for?" It's like, listen, buddy, <laughs> I also have not seen this movie. I don't know. <laughs> We'll have to watch to find out. I would always take my mom to go see movies, and she would like turn and ask me questions. I'm like, Mom, I've not seen this movie either. <laughs> we're, we're, we're in I this together. As much information has been given <laughs> to we're you. We're both in this together. Thanks for hanging out with us. If you like this, tell a friend. If you didn't, then lie to a friend. Check us out on Twitter at SoHowAbout. You can find me on Twitter at Seth Kumpf. You can find Andrew on Twitter at Tessu Downist. Uh, and subscribe to us on YouTube at So How About. And join us next time when we do this once more with interference. Watch it. Seth, now that the mics are off, what are we watching? Um, I don't really week? know because I don't think Morbius will be in theaters next week. And I don't know if we'll be able to watch it. See. Well, I guess we can we can hit that. I know. We'll just let's go out now. When we get it's only eight thirty. No, I was gonna say, I don't know why. Look, maybe it's just my headache and the fact that Kyle was really aggressive, and the fact that you do it all the time. But every time I say something and you just cut me off to say something I absolutely wasn't gonna say, but you're so like, I know that's your bit, but you're so adversarial during it, where I'm just like, I don't want to deal with you don't this have right to. now. I don't want to. Like, that's all I have myself. That's what I have been doing. All I, I have is that I just dumb move bit. past it. <laughs> <laughs> but then I have all these episodes where you do that. You like cut off my sentence and I always trail off because I don't want to talk over you. And then I'm just like, well, I got to leave that in there. <laughs> and then I have to figure out like, what do I do with this? Cause I don't, I don't acknowledge you. I just move past it. it. Yeah. So next time we're either going to watch Morbius or Blade. I don't know. Find out. What find do you want next us? time? <laughs> Maybe Morbius will still be in theaters. Probably not. Cool. 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 Cool.